Hello, Sugar Snaps. Welcome back to the studio. If you're new here, welcome in. I'm glad to have you. My name's Brittany. I'm the creator behind this channel. Today, I want to share a project that I'm experimenting with, working on learning. I'm going to be hand painting some wool. So I have some blue face Leicester roving. This is a white roving that I'm going to be dyeing using acid dyes. I have some jacquard acid dyes here and I'm going to use a hand painting technique where you create your uh, dyes in squirt bottles like these guys here and then lay out your wool on plastic wrap and then apply the dye to sections of your wool roving so you end up with kind of a strand of multicolored wool. This is my first time hand painting wool, so I'm going to go through the process and just kind of share what I'm doing as I go. We'll go over the tools and materials first. So I have towels here just in case. It's always good to have towels. Plastic wrap, saran wrap, whatever you wanna call it. Squirt bottles here that I'm going to be mixing my dyes into. I also have some larger dish soap bottles that I've been saving that I'm gonna use as squirt bottles. So you'll want one squirt bottle of water and then the enough squirt bottles for however many colors of dye you want to do. And then some jacquard acid dyes. You can do other acid dyes um, as well, but jacquard is what I'm using today. Some sort of wool roving, preferably wool fiber, so sheep fiber or alpaca fiber, um, anything that's a protein fiber that comes from an animal. Plant fibers don't do well with acid dyes. They just, um, the acid dye is meant for a protein fiber. A pot or bowl of cool water, a measuring cup, and white vinegar or citric acid. I'm going to use white vinegar instead of citric acid because it's more accessible. I happen to have it in my kitchen already and uh, it does the job just as well. I'm going to be dying four ounces of wool fiber. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up and the first step is to put it in your pot of water. So open up your wool and then place it in your pot of water so that it is submerged and it can soak in the water. Actually, gosh, did that backwards. Okay, try this again. This is why towels are handy. Okay, put this next to your pot. Before putting your wool into your water, you're going to want to add a quarter cup of the white vinegar or cit citric acid, whichever one you're using. I'm using white vinegar, so I'll put in a quarter cup here and stir it in so that's nice and incorporated. Now I'm going to put in the wool fiber. So I'll put it in here and gently submerge it into the water so that it's completely covered. And once it's submerged, we'll allow it to sit for 15 minutes. And while we let it sit, we'll create our dye bottles. Now I'll set this dye aside. And my next step is to mix the dyes into my dye bottles. But first I need to choose the colors that I'm going to use for this project. So I have a lot of blues. Blue happens to be my favorite color. I have a list of the tools and materials in the description below with resources for many of them. And if you click on some of those links, they're affiliate links, which means that if you purchase from one of those links, I receive a small dividend, which helps me to continue making free content here on YouTube. So thank you very much for doing that. Let's see, I have vermilion, burgundy, royal blue, turquoise, teal, and sapphire blue. I'm working with jacquard acid dyes. You don't have to work with jacquard necessarily, but acid dyes are necessary for this to work the way I'll be doing it today. I think I'm going to do burgundy, teal, and sapphire blue. I'll need these three bottles to create my dye liquid. Now the amount of powder you use it will determine how dark or intense the dye is. So more dye powder, the more intense the color will be, less the lighter the color will be. I definitely suggest wearing a dust mask when you are working with acid dyes or any kind of dye powders because you don't want to breathe the particles and get them into your lungs. It's just not good for you. So before working with the dyes, put on your mask and then you can open up your bottles and put the dye powder into your bottle. This might be tricky. So I'm going to go for deep colors. So I'm going to put Shoot for about a teaspoon of dye powder per bottle. 
I'm doing this little by little so that it doesn't go everywhere. I would suggest switching out spoons before changing up colors, but I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, so now I'm going to fill these guys up with water. This squirt bottle is full of just cool water. I'm gonna fill this up. Leave a bit of room in the head so that I have room to shake things up and make sure that the dye powder has totally dissolved. Okay, and now close these guys up. I'm gonna take this off. Now hold the top on your bottles, make sure that they're nice and sealed. Do kind of a little bit of a test shake before you totally go hog wild shaking up here. Make sure you don't want dye going everywhere because this is dye, it will stain anything that it touches, including your tabletop. So make sure it doesn't leak before you start to mix. And you'll want to mix it and then let it sit for a few minutes to just any of the powder dissolve on its own and then give it another mix after a few minutes. Now I'm going to set these aside and let them sit for a few minutes before I continue shaking them and make sure that all the dye powder has dissolved in the water. So allow that to sit for about five minutes and then come back to mix them up again. Now it's time to lay out the saran wrap in order to lay the wool out. So I'm going to cover my work surface with a layer of saran wrap laying a piece out a long strip. I want to be able to lay my roving out kind of in a coiled or in a, um, how would you say that? Like a snake back and forth across your work surface. So I'm gonna lay two pieces on top of each other and then cover the joint with a third piece just so none of the dye leaks through. Like so. Okay, so there's your work surface. So that's my work surface set up. To squeeze out the wool and work with the dyes, I suggest having some sort of rubber gloves, latex gloves, something to protect your hands so that when you're working with the fiber in the citric acid or the white vinegar, it doesn't bother your hands and you don't stain your hands with the dyes as you're dyeing. So let's take the pot of water and gently lift out the wool and squeeze out the excess water. Wool likes to absorb a lot of water. Squeeze gently in order to not felt it, but try to squeeze out a good amount of the water so you don't end up with a big puddle on your work surface. And now I'm going to take this and lay it out on my work surface. I'm working with a roving so it ends up in a nice strand. If you're working with a bat or bits of wool locks, you can lay them out in whichever way suits your surface or the way you want to dye it. I'm going to run this back and forth over my surface like so. And I'm leaving a space in between each switchback so that the rows can be different colors if, they want, if I want them to be. Okay, and now I'll grab my dye bottles again and I'm going to shake them up, make sure there's no dye in the bottom of your bottle. Just give them a secondary shake, make sure it's nice and dissolved. Okay, so you'll want your dye bottles as well as your squirt bottle with water. Okay, I'm gonna start dyeing now, so I'm gonna open this guy up. I'm starting with the burgundy. And you can start with whatever color you want, and you can put as many different colors on your wool as you want. I would suggest doing about a three inch gap between colors because when we're done putting dye on the entire surface of the roving, we'll put another layer of plastic wrap over top and then squish the dyes through the wool to make sure it, the dye saturates all of the wool. And then we can blend the colors that are next to each other if we want. If you don't want them blending like my burgundy and the teal, which is kind of green, it'll kind of turn a brown color because green and red turn brown together. So I don't want those to touch too much because I don't want a lot of brown in my wool coloring. So I'm not going to mix those colors or put those colors as closely together make sure there's a space between them. So I'm going to go in here and just start applying dye here. 
at different intervals and you want to get your squirt bottle right up into the fiber because it's going to take that amount to soak it in. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you've applied your dye liquid. Now in between each of the colors, we're going to take some water and put a squirt of water into each spot. So adding water in between to saturate the wool and this will help the dye to move around. So get your squirt bottle right up onto the wool and squirt it in there so that you'll be able to see when it's saturated because the wool will start to look wet. Otherwise it will just bead off like here it's just coming off the wool. Now you can see it's wet. Just putting a few squirts into each spot to make sure it's nice and wet. And now once all of your spaces are either wet with the water or dyed with the dye liquid. Then we're going to take some saran wrap and cover the entirety of the wool roving. Basically the same way we laid out the saran wrap in the first place, we'll do that again over top. And then I'll do one in the middle again to make sure it doesn't bleed through. Okay, and then over this, what I'm, I'm going to do is come in here and squish the dye liquid around so that it's pressed into the fibers. And I'm, I'm ensuring that all of the wool is saturated by the dye so that that whole portion will dye the color I want it to, to be and not just the top layer where the dye hit first or underneath where it sunk through. And you can work it a lot to create blending, like here, this, this section, I'm rubbing back and forth and that's blending the colors. Or you can just tap it gently to get the dye saturated into that section of wool and then move on. some white space in between. There's some of the wool that didn't saturate with the dye and I'm gonna leave that because it's either going to absorb dye as I heat it or just stay white and then I'll have nice white space in between my colors which could add some depth to the finished yarn or finished fiber once it's finished dyeing. Okay, now I'm going to take the ends of this plastic wrap and fold it over to ink make sure that these ends are sealed go over the ends and close them up on both sides. Like so. And then I'm going to do the same on the ends. Holding the ends in. Now we're going to take this and roll it into a ball. Transfer it to a towel. And I'm going to wrap it in saran wrap so that it doesn't leak. So I'll fold over the ends and then wrap it around. Like 
so. And now bundle this up. Now you'll take this bundle and put it in a microwave safe bowl and heat it on high heat for five minutes. Despite wearing gloves, I somehow still dyed my hands. <laughs> okay, so here is the dyed roving. It ended up being quite intense in color. The burgundy really likes to mix with any other colors, and so it mixed with the royal blue and turned kind of a purpley color. It's more of a purple anyways, but you can see the layout here. I'll transfer it to a white surface so you can see it better go from royal blue into a deep purple and burgundy, back to royal blue and purple, and then end in some sea greens, kind of tropical ocean colors up here. And the blue face light chester has a nice sheen, so it takes the colors of the acid dye really well and creates a very lustrous dyed wool fiber. So I rinse this out to remove all the excess dye in the sink and now I will allow it to dry by hanging it. Wool can hold up to about 30% of its weight in water without feeling wet so it can take a couple days before your wool roving will be completely dry and ready to use for a spinning project or felting or whatever you're going to use your hand painted wool fiber for. Like this video because it encourages me to keep making videos. If you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified whenever I put out a new video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you try hand painting wool roving on your own. If you do leave a comment below, I'd love to hear how your experience goes and what colors you use. The variety of outcomes in hand painting wool roving is probably endless because there are so many colors of dyes and combinations of wool and dye and, and how much dye you add. And anyways, there's so many elements to hand painting that make it very unique to your work. And if you notice, I left some white space when I was laying out my dye and all of that white space is gone. So all of those spaces uh, absorb dye in the heating process. So I ended up with some intensely dyed wool fiber, which is great. I'll have fun spinning with it. But if you want to include white space in between your portions, I would put less dye and keep wider spaces between where you want white space and where you want color. If you enjoy my work here on YouTube, check out my Patreon. Patreon is a way for creators to be supported by their audience through small monthly donations in exchange for exclusive content. I have links in the description below to my Patreon. Now go hang your wool to dry and I'll see you in a couple days with a new video. Happy making, see you next time, bye.